when God made you, he made you complete. And by that I mean, he made you a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. And each of these entities have their own desires. The desires of the flesh which is the body is not in agreement with the desires of the spirit. They are in constant enmity with each other. You may ask, what about the desires of your soul? Yes, the desires of your soul is to always do either the desires of your flesh or of your spirit. So we see that there is a constant war going on between us where our flesh wants something and our spirit wants a different thing. And the agent to execute those desires is your soul. Sometimes, you may feel torn apart when you want to have sex with someone that you are not married to. One part of you says it's wrong and another part denies that it is wrong. This has led a lot of people to commit sexual sins and sometimes it feels as though you can't control yourself. You want to stop but you can't. I have had some people walk up to me during counseling sessions that they feel powerless. Their willpower to say no at that point of committing sexual immorality is weak. And a lot of people out there will really relate with what I'm saying. You have to understand that God made your sexual urges. Like every other normal human being, it's absolutely normal to have sexual desires because we are not only spiritual beings but also sexual beings. And as sexual beings, you will have and you will feel the temptation to fulfill your desires. These desires, according to God, must only be fulfilled in the context of marriage because sex is a covenant that must only be established on the legal grounds of marriage. So now, we see that one reason that your body wants sex so much is because we are sexual beings. And our sexuality is a gift from God. Sex and marriage is a gift from God. And that gift has to be protected and not abused. When we commit sexual sins, we abuse that gift that God has given to us. Just feeling like having sex doesn't mean that you should act on the feeling, especially if you are not yet married. Is it every time you feel like doing something that you go ahead and do it? Feelings come and they go. Yes, the urges will be there, but that doesn't mean that you should go ahead and act on it. The urges and desires are common to all. The temptation to have sex before marriage is very common to all. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear. We see that even Jesus was tempted in all measures, yet he was without sin. God wants you to know that just because you were tempted doesn't mean that you have committed a sin or you have to fall into the sin. We have many heroes of faith who were tempted in their days and they did not fall. Let's take the story of Joseph who was tempted to sleep with his master's wife. His master wasn't aware of this and he could have just slept with the woman and nothing would have been said about it. But in Genesis chapter 39 verse 9, it explains why he didn't consent to her request. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He saw sex with a woman that was not his wife as great wickedness and sin before God. That was what he called it. Committing sexual immorality with the person you are not married to is great wickedness and sin before God. If you hear these words and still go on having sexual immorality with someone that is not yet your wife, then you are committing great wickedness and sin before God. 
God wants you to keep your body holy. And he said he won't let you do it alone. He will make a way of escape for you. He will help you to be strong against the temptation. You must depend on the Holy Spirit for strength and self-control. That's the only way to be free from sin. Listen, you don't have to succumb to the feelings and urges from your body. You must understand that God has given you the power to keep those feelings quiet. You don't have to act on them. You are not a slave to how you feel. You are not a slave to sex. You don't have to sleep with someone that you are not married to. You have the option to say no and keep your body holy. Don't let the enemy lie to you that everyone does it. That's a lie from hell. A lot of people think that when God is speaking to us about abstaining from sexual immorality, it's because he doesn't love us. But that's not true. It's the opposite. It's because he loves us and that's why he's speaking about it. He doesn't want us to be slave to the same thing we are supposed to have dominion over. The love of a good father is seen in how much instructions he gives to help you avoid a danger. You are different and you have different standards. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20, For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You now belong to Jesus somebody. God made sex for you and not you for sex. You can be in control of your emotions if only you will obey what has been written in his word. Take up a fight against your lust. It is called the good fight of faith. God will never let you down. He will never allow you to face the lost struggle alone. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have someone in you called the Holy Spirit who can help you quench those lustful passions. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 10, the Bible clearly tells us of another powerful strategy to help us overcome lustful desires. It says, Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a rolling lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But by the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and said to you, To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you resist those lustful passions and desires and put your faith in the Holy Spirit, you will always come out victorious. It may be very hard in the beginning, but if you keep resisting, the desires will keep losing its grip over you. It's important that we stay pure so that our lives can be true examples to both believers and unbelievers. I have seen a lot of people talk about how bad sex is and how we shouldn't engage in sexual activities. They even go as far as saying that having sex is evil. But is that really true? We must examine this with proofs from God's word and see if it is true or not. Now, there is a truth I want you to know as we learn about this. But before I enter into it, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified when we upload a new video every time. Thanks for supporting God's work. God bless you. The truth is that everything God created is in two ways. There is a good side and a bad side. We see this illustrated in the Garden of Eden. God gave them everything good. He even said that everything he made was good. 
there was a tree of blessing, or you may say good, and there was also a tree of curses or evil. God was using that event in the garden to teach us that everything in life has two sides. Also, the sex has two sides to it. We will discuss both sides and try to create a balance. God created sex for men and not men for sex. He made you to have sex, want sex, and enjoy sex. This is where a lot of people will want to quit watching, but please stay with me on this. We have in our subconscious that it was the devil that made sex. And this thinking comes just because a lot of believers are being tempted by the devil with lust. The fact that the devil uses sex to tempt a believer doesn't mean that he made it. God made sex and he made it only to be enjoyed in the context of marriage. There are obvious reasons from scriptures why God made sex to be in marriage. And that is because of the sacredness of sex. Sex is a covenant that joins two people together. Not just two people of the same gender, but of opposite gender. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5 verse 2, He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day that they were created. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. So God's idea of godly sex must be between a man and a woman. The physical sexual organ of both a man and a woman proves this truth. Sex is supposed to also be an additional factor to keep a marriage healthy. Having sex with your partner in marriage will only create pure intimacy and love. This lovely covenant of sex must be protected. God has a principle of protecting anything that is of value to him. Sex is of value to both man and God, and so it has to be protected. And that protection is marriage. Sex is supposed to seal the joining of two legally married people. Marriage makes it godly possible to be joined to a person. The enemy wants to use this beautiful pleasure God has created for mankind to tempt man and corrupt man. Marriage protects sex. Sex outside of marriage opens the door for demons and ungodly spirit to come in. Even Jesus confirms this in John chapter 10 verse 10. He says that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Satan knows how spiritual sex is and so he tries to make you create soul ties outside of marriage so that he can keep your heart broken and unstable. Can you imagine building a house without walls and gates? You risk being robbed by thieves. But if you are well protected, it will be difficult for them to get in. The same thing with sex. God wants you to have sex under the protection of marriage. Failing to adhere to this wise counsel of the Holy Spirit will open you up to being robbed by the enemy. The devil lies to certain believers that they can have sex and also later ask God for forgiveness. This is a strategy of the devil. Inasmuch as God is a loving father and he loves his children, we must not forget that he has principles. If we listen to the devil, yes, God will forgive you, but it will not take away the consequences of what you have done. Take for example, if you sleep with a lady that is not your wife or vice versa, and you ask God for forgiveness, Yes, God will forgive you, but the consequences of having a baby or getting so tight or opening the doors for devils to come into your life may not be averted. Certain consequences can be avoided if only we will listen to God. God gives second chances and he can give you another chance to genuinely repent if you will sincerely be repentant of what you did. Brothers and sisters, 
Don't allow the devil to invade your life again. It's time to change things. Even Apostle Paul confirms that marriage is a protection in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. The man of God is not telling believers not to have sex, but if they cannot control themselves anymore, then they should get married and have sex. Sex is so powerful. The passion is so strong that God had to put marriage to help control that passion. So if you think the sex is just a one-time thing, then you don't understand it yet. Listen, during sex, body liquids are exchanged. A part of you is being given to the other person. It is depositing a huge part of you inside another person. If you are not ready to get stalked or joined with a person, don't engage in it. Planning to get married to a person is not the same as actually married to that person. Many people have fallen into that sex life from a person. Just because they said that they will marry you, then they go ahead and have sex with them only for them to be surprised afterwards. Brothers and sisters, you will be tempted with lust. Your body will feel like having sex. But please, don't open the door to devils. You can damage your life by just doing that. When your body feels like having sex, you must control yourself. And if you can't control yourself, God said, go and marry. The same enemy that will tempt you into having sex outside the borders of marriage is the same devil that will oppress you when he comes in. So we see that sex is good in the borders of marriage, but bad outside of marriage. So back to where we began. Is sex evil? No. Sex is good, but it can be wrong if we get intimate with someone that we are not married to. Is money evil? Is a mobile phone evil? Are social networks evil? All these good things can be used to distract and corrupt the believer, but it doesn't make it evil. Some of the evil that we can see is that some people contact diseases from having intercourse with the person, or they can have a child that they never planned on having. Sex is clearly God's idea of showing love to your partner. Couples who have regular sex can tell you of the importance of this intimacy. God put marriage not only as a restriction, but also as a protection. That's a good sign of his fatherly love towards us. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more videos on Christian living perspective and faith. Do well also to like and also share this video as well. Let us know in the comment section what you think about having sex outside of marriage. How does it resonate with you and what do you take from it? We love to read your comments and hope to see your perspective. Once again, thanks for watching. Till next time, have a blessed day. Sexual sins. For some Christians, it's their number one hindrance to enjoying their work with God. I have found that most Christians who commit sexual sins do this in secret and not in the open. Most people who suffer from lust commit it so much so that they don't even know the difference between living in holiness and living in lust. Lust for most people is a normal way of life. Their conscience is cold towards sexual immorality. For some people, they have even destroyed their home because they couldn't control themselves from sexual immorality. They have a sexual affair with someone who is not their spouse, and as a result, they lose their marriage and everything they have owned. But before I tell you a story I heard, I would like to encourage you to please subscribe and like and share our YouTube channel. And please turn on the notification bell to be notified each time we upload a new video. I heard of a couple who recently got married. 
Their marriage was the definition of the right marriage. It was what every person looked forward to having in the marriage. They had a very strong love between each other. They had a beautiful home and lovely children. The woman always spoke highly of her husband because of how much she thought he loved her. Until one day, she heard a knock on the door. She opened it and found that it was a woman with two children. They were looking for her husband, but the husband was not at home. He was at work. Few hours later, the husband returned. He was shocked to see the other woman and her children. The wife later found out from his confession that he started dating this woman three years after they got married. Sexual immorality brings nothing but shame to people and that is why it is done in secret. You enjoy pleasure for a moment but it destroys something valuable in the long run. If you were involved in any form of sexual scenes like fornication, adultery, masturbation, pornography, you must understand that it is destroying you. If we are saying you shouldn't commit sexual sin, it is not because we don't love you or we are judging you. It's because of what happens to a person that commits sexual sins. There is no enjoyment in sexual sins. It only destroys you and the person involved. Have you noticed the sexual scenes are now normal in the world? The devil is making sexual immorality look like what mature people do. This is a very big deception from hell. Look at the movies, the social media. A lot of sexual immoral things are being sown into the minds of people, Christians inclusive. These sexual scenes are also in the church today. Many people in the churches are committing adultery and fornication. Some church leaders and pastors suffer from pornography and masturbation. The devil makes you hide that sin so that you won't be free. We have a duty as believers to not only preach the truth but also to walk in the truth. I have found that, that even among those who are spiritual, the devil has a way to lure them with this sin. This is why we must stand on our guard so that we won't be victims. There have been cases of big CEOs and wealthy people who have been brought low because of a scandal that they committed. A pastor in America recently asked the whole congregation for forgiveness because he committed adultery and he was ashamed of it. It doesn't matter who you are. You must always stay humble and allow the grace of God to help you always overcome sexual temptation. This is why no one should feel judged by this message. We are all products of God's grace. Any person that you see fighting sexual immorality purely is doing that by the grace of God. Don't feel bad. We all at one point or the other in our life had fallen short of the glory of God. You can choose to stay fallen or you can rise from that struggle. The Bible speaks of a certain king by name David who committed sexual immorality and ended up committing other grievous sins because of it. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2 to 4 Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And Solomon said, Is this not Bathsheba? the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him and he lay with her for she was cleansed from her impurity. And she returned to her house. King David also suffered from this secret sin. He slept with another man's wife while his men were at war. When he found out that she was pregnant, he asked one of his men to call her husband from the battlefield. He did this so that her husband would go with her and sleep with her 
and the pregnancy will be mistaken as her husband. But her husband refused to go in and sleep with her because he was still in battle mood. David later ordered that her husband be put in a battle line where he will be killed. King David killed her husband because of this sexual immorality he was trying to cover up. We can see that sexual immorality doesn't only stop at the act, but it can lead to death. I am not only talking about physical death, but also emotional, spiritual, and otherwise. When God is warning us about sexual immorality, we must never be tired of listening to his voice. He knows what is best for you. Sexual sins affect your own body. This is the only sin that has effect on your physical body. All the sins have effect spiritually, but sexual sins also have physical effect. Many Christians know this, and yet they are still committing fornication and adultery. The fact that it is done in secret doesn't stop it from having an effect on your physical body. Don't endanger your body because of pleasure. The devil is not only destroying your spiritual life, he is destroying your entire being. He is using pleasure to give you pain. It may not feel like pain right now, but believe me, the pain will always come if you don't sincerely repent and never go back again. Sexual intercourse is dangerous. You may be seeing a physical act of 5 or 10 minutes, but the consequences are huge. When you have that physical act with that person, you are joining yourself with a person. Why on earth would you want to be joined to a person who you don't know what spirit they carry? You don't even know their spiritual background and what demons they have opened the door to in their own personal life. Sexual immorality joins you with a person as one soul. This is what is called soul tie. The sexual demand of that person's soul begins to affect your own soul. Soon, apart from your sexual present challenges, you are having to suffer also from the other person's personal challenges.